This is baby girl analysis problems, and this will be problem seven to the playlist that's on YouTube. <clears throat> and again, this supplements the baby girl analysis playlist, or I think it's called intro to real analysis playlist, but I'm calling it baby real analysis because it's a it's introductory level real analysis. So this will be problem seven, and it's actually taken from two exercises from Bartle's Intro to Real Analysis, fourth edition. So in section 2.5, we have these two exercises. Exercise one <clears throat> shows says that if I is uh, the interval, closed interval AB, and I prime is the closed interval A prime to B prime, and they're closed in the reals, show that I is contained in I prime if and only if a prime is less than or equal to A, and B is less than or equal to B prime. And then exercise two is uh, if S is a non-empty subset of the reals, show that S is bounded if and only if there exists a closed bounded interval I such that S is contained in I. All right, so these are the problems. So now I'll do the proof for exercise one. All right, so exercise uh, one. So I is the closed interval A, B. I prime, closed interval A prime, B prime. And they're, again, they're closed in the reals. So we're going to show that I is contained in I prime if and only if A prime is less than or equal to A less and B is less than or equal to B prime. So I'm gonna do this direction first. So assume A prime less than or equal to A and B is less than or equal to B prime. We wish to show that I is contained in I prime. All right, so WTS is for wish to show. So to do this, we're gonna pick an arbitrary element that's in I. So pick any X in I. Then since it's an arbitrary element in I, we're going to show that it's also an I prime. All right, so that's what we're going to do for that part in order to show the containment. All right, so X is an I, so what does that mean? Since X is an I, then we have because I is the closed interval A, B. And then we have A is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to B. All right, that's just what we know since X is in I. We know A prime is less than or equal to A. And so that means A prime is less than or equal to A, less than or equal to X, which we know is less than or equal to B. So we also know B is less than or equal to B prime. So now we have A prime less than or equal to A, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to B, and B is less than or equal to B prime. But so that means A prime is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to B prime. So that's what it means for X to be in the closed interval a prime b prime which is what we're calling i prime so then this means 
x is contained in i prime. All right, so we showed that i is contained in i prime. Now the other direction. Assume i is contained in i prime. Um, so we'll show a prime is less than or equal to a and b is less than or equal to b prime. All right, so let's see. So if i is contained in i prime, then for a, which is an element of i, it's also an element of i prime. And if it's an element of i prime and also an element of i, then this means a is between a prime and b prime. So you have a prime is less than or equal to a, less than or equal to b prime. And again, so since i is contained in i prime, then for b, contained in i, b is also an i prime. If b is an i prime, then that means b is between a prime and b prime. So we have a prime less than or equal to a less than or equal to b. Oh, sorry. a prime less than or equal to b, which is less than or equal to b prime. So we basically showed that we have A primes less than or equal to A, right? Because of that. And then this would be double star. And B is less than or equal to B prime because of double star. All right, so then that way we've shown the proof is complete. So we did both directions. All right, so that was the first exercise. The second exercise, I'll do it a different color. So we have a non-empty subset of the reals to show that S is bounded if and only if there exists a closed bounded interval I such that S is contained in I. That's the next problem. All right, so example two, or exercise two from Bartle. So we're gonna have S subset of the reals and S is non-empty. We're going to show S is bounded if and only if there exists a closed bounded interval I. such that S is contained in I. All right, so I'll do this direction first. So let S be bounded. We wish to show there exists a closed interval I such that 
closed bounded interval I such that S is contained in I is what we're going to show. So S is bounded, and since S is a subset of the reals, S is non-empty, then S has a supremum and infimum by the completeness property of the reals. Alright, so S being bounded means it has a greatest uh, lower bound and least upper bound with what it means to be bounded. So it has a soup and has an int. So that means for all X and S, X is less than or equal to the soup of S. And then also for all X and S, X is uh, greater than or equal to the int of S. So then this means We have the imp of s is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to the soup of s for all x and s. So we can let our closed bounded interval, so let i equal the closed interval where the endpoints you have is int of s and then soup of s. All right, so if x is in s, then x is in i, because we have, we just established the inequality above that the infimum of s is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to the supremum of s. All right, I is bounded. Because for any lower bound, and they'll say lower bound W of I, you have the W being less than or equal to the infimum of s and then for any upper bound let's say upper bound t of i we have that the supremum of s is less than or equal to t. So we have w less than or equal to the infimum of s, um, and that's going to be less than or equal to the supremum of s, and the supremum is less than or equal to t for t is any upper bound. So then that that's why we have I is bounded, it has, there's a lower bound and upper bound to I. All right, so that means I is bounded, and then we know I is closed since it contains all X and S. So we've produced a closed, and bounded interval I
such that S is contained in I. And that was when we, because we assumed in this case, S was bounded. All right, now the other direction. Okay, so just to recap, so we have a bounded subset of the reals. It's non-empty. The reals is complete. So this non-empty non subset, because it's bounded, has a supremum and an infimum. And so that means for all x and s, we have x is less than or equal to the supremum. And then x is also, for all x and s, we have x is greater than or equal to the infimum. So stringing that together, we could say that we have the inf of s is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to the sup of s for all x and s. So that can be, that's our interval. We can see our closed interval i being inf s and sup s as our endpoints and having brackets for those endpoints so that we have it being closed. Now for it to be bounded, um, first off, if any x is an s, then x is an i. So i needs to, is, is bounded because for any lower bound w of i, w is less than or equal to the infimum of s, which that's our endpoint to i, our left endpoint. And then for any upper bound t of i, we have that the sup of s is less than or equal to t. And this is all just based on definition of supremum, definition of infimum. And so we have W is less than or equal to the infimum of S, which is less than or equal to the sup of S, which is less than or equal to T. So I is bounded. So therefore I is a closed and bounded interval such that S is contained in I. Now the other direction. So the other direction Assume there exists a closed bounded interval interval I such that S is contained in the reals and then our closed bounded I's I mean, that's also a subset of the reals. We're going to show uh, that, uh, sorry, this, we assume there's a closed bounded interval I of the real such that S is contained in I. We wish to show S is bounded. Okay, so that's what we wish to show. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna let, since I is an interval, closed bounded interval, I'll let it be the closed bounded interval from A to B. So pick any X and S, then that means X is an I since S is contained in I. And what does that mean? So if X is an I, I mean, from X and it's an S and then that implies X is an I, then that means A is less than or equal to X. And so A is a lower bound. Of S. And then also X is less than or equal to B since X is an I. So then B is an upper bound. Of S. Okay, so then since 
S has a lower bound and an upper bound, then S is bounded. All right, so that completes the proof for the second exercise. All right, so that's it for this video. I counted two, these two exercises as like one problem. All right, so that's where I'll stop the video. So I just proved these two exercises. That was our problem seven.